Hello! Eight. Oh, we have Big Scott this time. Nice. Big, Big Scott. Scott. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, there might be a shrinkage to uh, Scott's window as we go. Uh, we're back. Jason from Face Shift Games. Darren. And Scott on the little window. Big. All Face Shift Games, of course. <laughs> So uh, we changed the look of our environment a little bit because we are showing you something different. We're not in the dungeon, although we're still physically in the dungeon here at our dungeon headquarters. But we're going to be transcending up, mm -hmm. talking about space, infinite space in the new game that we have called Drop Drive. Um, so I'll give you a couple words of caution uh, regarding what you're about to see. It is a heavy prototype. Um, this mm -hmm. is, you know, this is coming out next year. So we have paper uh, with some drawings on them mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and cubes and, and poker chips are our space bucks. So know that that's what you're going to be looking at, but you are going to get to see the full game of Drop Drive. We're going to teach it. We're going to play it. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and I think you will all be very happy with what is to come in this game. So... Um, uh. That prototype artwork is pretty nice. I know. I think uh, we had a semi-professional artist do even our prototype artwork, courtesy of Scott. So, Scott. Um, oh, you know what? I'll come to you in a second. Let me first, a uh, couple quick general announcements. Um, Want to thank uh, uh, Maselli Productions. We're, we're in their studio today. That is my thank brother's you. company, professional uh, video production company. He actually figured out how to get us inside this dungeon headquarter environment, which is just so cool. Um, blowing away all other exhibitors, mm -hmm. I believe. We I win. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, and so, uh, as much as it is a little weird doing a science fiction game now in the dungeon, but that's okay. Um, what other uh, announcements? Uh, if you like what you see today, you can't buy it yet. But we would love you to go to faceshiftgames.com and sign up for our newsletter. Then you'll get to stay informed. We're going to tell you as the game progresses. We're going to tell you when the Kickstarter is planned for for next year. And in the meantime, we have a lot of other cool stuff in the works and already available in Dungeon Drop and some of our expansions for Dungeon Drop, et cetera, et cetera. So please do uh, check us out at faceshiftgames.com. And then, of course, on our booth at uh, UK Games Expo, our virtual booth, we also have some special show specials there. Uh, you can buy Dungeon Drop from some of the participating retailers. And there's also a code uh, if you want to buy any of the add-ons for Dungeon Drop from us. Uh, there's a 20% off discount code. It's simply virtually expo during checkout. So all those details are on our booth page. Check them out. And with that, I think we're ready to start talking about Drop Drive. Scott, what the heck is Drop Drive? All right. Well, um, at its core, it's a it's kind of a space trading exploration game. Um, and you know this kind of goes back to i guess it's it's ultra early roots or even in some of my very first conversations with jason about dungeon drop where um when we were first embarking on the project uh, we had talked about you know other places you could take this um kind of spatial idea and certainly we tossed out sci-fi as a as a direction to go now that was just going to be for kind of um, different themes you could put on the core game that was Dungeon Drop. Uh, of course, we stuck with the dungeon theme, and that has has evolved into its own great thing. Um, but you know, we all love sci-fi here, and we wanted to kind of get back to that at some point. Um, and we made the decision, you know, we really weren't going to just uh, re-theme Dungeon Drop in a different way. We wanted to take this in an entirely new direction. So. Um, we want to put these things together. And, uh, you know, I think what's starting to come out of it is something all of, all its own, which has been really exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, I anytime we play test, a, or I play test a prototype as a designer, it's, uh, you know, it's the most kind of exciting, fun part of the thing, but it's also a little nerve wracking. Uh, this is even going to be one step further for me because we're live streaming. Uh, but, um, yeah, I am getting excited about the project for sure. And, um, you know, I think one of the things I early on wanted to take into this version of the game is in my playtesting of Dungeon Drop, um, 
you know, even as it eventually evolved into the, the awesome thing we, we think it is today, one of the things that, that people would say in play testing is that they kind of wish they could go in the dungeon space. Now in Dungeon Drop, you, you form rooms, you sort of slice that space up, but you're not really inside the dungeon in, in a particular location. Uh, and that was kind of the core concept that I built um, the original version of, of Drop Drive around, which is let's take, let's get a spaceship and let's dive into the tabletop in a way you don't in that specific way in Dungeon Drop. Um, of course, it meant that we weren't going to be forming rooms anymore. So you're going to see right away that uh, even though Jason's or whoever drops the cubes, that part of it will look, <coughs> look similar right away um, things are going to change because you have to have a new way to navigate the tabletop and, and you really do navigate it in drop drive um he'll be showing you that in just a second um and i think uh the last thing i'd say is just uh you know i mentioned this before i think all of us really love sci-fi and this is an opportunity to take some of the things that we really love about uh, the, the world of sci-fi uh, games and entertainment into this really accessible, um, we're hoping, um, play space that, that Dungeon Drop already kind of inhabits and it makes it a family game experience. And we think, we hope we can do the same thing with some of the big epic kind of space trading sci-fi experience uh, by taking it into the this, this same very spatial tactile realm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just super, super excited and um, looking forward to seeing the playtest. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to probe some questions, but you already basically answered yeah. them all. Like, so it's not just a reskin of Dungeon Drop. Not at all. Uh, why is the drop mechanic important? Actually, yeah, I mean, you know, why, why, if it is such a different game, why even try to have this, like, you know, copy from Dungeon Drop, this drop mechanic? Why, why is that important? Well... It, it's a, a core piece that has taken these games in a direction that I think we all feel feels really unique. That starting from this point is this, this, this randomized play space. It, it feels to us just an exciting starting point for game design because of its um, unpredictability. So, you know, you drop this stuff starting from that core point and and we still have i think that same core excitement of looking at the table and how this incredibly unique play space has instantly evolved um so you know we decided to keep that at its core again you'll, you'll see very quickly how it departs but i think we all think that that's exciting enough and um has enough potential in it to go in more than one direction you, you, you uh, I just want to touch on this really quick because it, it is interesting from a design perspective, though, <laughs> as you said, like anything can happen because of this, like just this infinite nature of, of the drop that anything can happen is really hard to design for because in, in, in an, pretty much any other game design, you can set rules to prevent X, Y or Z from ever being possibly mm -hmm. happening. Right. In this game. What happens if all the pillars drop in the very center of the table and all the good loot is all around it? Like, theoretically, that could happen. The chances are, are, are very minuscule um, that, you know, they'll all get mixed together. But technically, anything can... And so you will get strange dungeons where there's this weird sliver of rooms, you know, with the pillars all kind of in this array and then there's other stuff. And or other times where the pillars are completely on the outskirts and everything is inside it. Uh, anything can happen. And, and what we have to think about constantly is, I'm just going to say the bell curve, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the 95th percentile of likelihood? And we want to build towards that 95th percentile being this sublime experience. Mm -hmm. But the other two and a half percent on each side can happen. <laughs> And there's there's just nothing you can do about that, right. um, and and that creates more of the uniqueness of it. Yes, so. just the give and take of having a random starter position. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're joined by Liliana as well. So thank you, Lily. She's going to help us play test. Uh, doesn't look like there's any questions, so I think we are going to get started with Drop Drive. 
We have people on both Facebook and Twitch, so thanks for joining. Uh, so again, we have prototype components here. Um, let's uh, let's dig in. We'll mm. we'll set up the game. We'll show you guys how we set set up. We can switch over to our top down view. All right. Mm. We are still using our dungeon walls just to help contain the space. Mm -hmm. um, ha, contain the space. There you go. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have some fun today, guys. Uh, <laughs> so ignore the dungeon walls. Uh, they're just walls, and clearly we will have some. Themed, space themed. some space uh, uh, wall equivalent uh, with the with the final version. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff going on here than what you're used to seeing with Dungeon Drop. So along here we have planets. I'm going to talk about those. Over here we have poker chips. Uh, but imagine that they're space bucks uh, or whatever we can legally call them because uh, we probably can't call them space bucks. Uh, but uh, some kind of, in fact, we'll probably end up having a naming contest for what those should be called. Mm. So start thinking now. Yeah. Uh, there's a game I, I like, a sci-fi game. They call them Balonium. <laughs> <laughs> the space bucks, whatever version of it. All right. So we have cubes in the center. There's um, crystals. Actually, there's very few cubes. There's these five very large cubes. These are planets. And these are going to be represented by the, the markets for the planets are, are over there. So there's a yellow planet and a blue and so on. Um, there's crystals, which are basically asteroids in space. And we're going to be going to the different asteroids and mining them for all their precious uh, ores and materials mm -hmm. and selling them. What may be harder to see for you all, and I apologize, there are black cubes. These are actually uh, like hulks of old... Uh, archaic spaceships that have broken down or, or stations that have broken down and we can land on a hulk and explore it for its technology and, and get some find different things there let's see do they actually show up here kind of, yeah. they kind of show up so just know that there's some dark hulks here and we'll, we'll narrate as we go um, and then there's some dice and these dice are going to represent pirates in space other pirate ships and the number that's facing up is actually how strong that pirate is and also what type of pirate that is. So this five is actually a, um, a graviteer. If you were to take out that pirate, if you had enough battle strength on your ship, you would actually get to flick a planet, which is, that's the only way in the entire game to flick a planet. It's a very powerful ability. So there's different effects for the different pirates based on what number is showing. That's actually it in the base. Uh, all the crystals, there's one cube, but it's basically a crystal. Those are, again, for, for mining, space hulks, planets, uh, pirates, and then we have our ships. As Scott mentioned, we now have basically our character are represented by these, uh, these circular disks, and they're going to be navigating around space, uh, collecting things and fighting things and so on. Um, I'm always purple, so I'm just going to take purple. I'm always blue. Uh, we don't have blue. Oh, we have blue. There's blue. I was going to say. Light blue. And you're getting a die uh, as well, which is how you roll for battle when you're battling pirates. And Darren, would you like to be yellow or white? I'll take white. Okay. I have a name for the coins. Funny money. <laughs> that works too. All right. Just <laughs> like... Dungeon Drop, we all get a couple cards to start with, but it's not a race in a class. What it is, is a front half of a ship and a back half of a ship. But they have very different things going on. So in this game that I'm about that we're about to play, I will be the spacious sunbeam. All right, the front of my ship, we'll do them one at a time. The front of my ship indicates that I have a drop drive of three. So a drop drive, think of it as like your hyperspace drive. Uh, but it's like you're actually, what was the uh, Star Trek Discovery, where it has the, what do they call it, the, uh, the spore drive, okay. where it like phases from one spot to another. Think of that, like when you think of the drop drive. And the number, in, in the case of drop drive, you actually want a lower number. Uh, the higher number makes you un more unpredictable. It's the higher you're going to have to drop your ship, mm -hmm. and it can bounce further. Um, your battle rating is there. I have a battle rating of plus zero. So whatever I roll, that is what my... You know, my out outcome is for fighting pirates. Other uh, ships have plus two, three, four. Some ships even have minus one. And then I happen to have a cargo spot on my ship as well, uh, in the front of my ship. Most cargo is in the back, but I actually, I'm the spacious, so I have a cargo in the front. Now, when we get to the back of the ship, some different characteristics. I have three cargo spaces there, so all in, I have four. Um, I have an explore rating of three. And you're going to see uh, what that means throughout the game. Every time I have a chance to explore, I'm going to draw three cards and choose one. And I have what's called a string drive. So there's a drop drive and also a string drive. 
think of string drive as your impulse speed, mm -hmm. the, uh, the amount of distance that you can fly uh, and navigate around the stars. And my string drive is four, which is a pretty good rating. Okay, so that's me. Lily is? Ooh, I am the lone wombat. Hmm. So I got drop driver three, battle plus two, Ooh, battle four plus cargo. Five explorer, cargo four. in the back. Five, oh my gosh. <laughs> four explorer and one. One string drive, so you're very, 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 very slow. Very but there slow. are ways to improve all these things. So. Because I'm the lonely wombat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you want to explore a lot. And with your explore rating of four, you'll probably get better chances to find improvements to your string drive mm -hmm. and things like that. And Darren? I am the rogue drifter. I like that. It's a good sound. Drop drive of four, um, explore of three, and a string drive of five. So. Mm, you are zippy. Yes. Okie dokie. You are the opposite for me. <laughs> All right. I am going to give us each. Uh, this is set for four, so this is set for me. What this is that I'm holding, it's black again, so it's going to uh, be harder for you to see it, uh, get it close to the camera. This is our navigational tool. This is a prototype that I had 3D printed, courtesy of uh, Southington Cyber Knights, our robotics team here in town. We're world champions, pretty awesome. And they were gracious enough to help uh, prototype some uh, of these plastic components. But you'll see that what I'm able to do is bend this tool in all these different shapes in in two dimensions at least, you can't bend it three dimensionally. Uh, but this is my navigational tool. So if I have a string drive, as I do, of four, then I have four links on this tool and I am able to set my flight path how I want it and my ship is gonna move from one spot at one end all the way to the other end and whatever's underneath this tool, I get to collect or encounter during my turn. So the higher your string drive, the longer this tool is and the more capabilities you have. Um, and then for the drop drive, it uses the same tool mechanism. I have a drop drive of three, so I'll basically just cover one with my thumb when I'm dropping. And what you do is you put it on the table vertically, and where's my ship? Here it is. And that's the height that you drop from, and that's where I would have landed with my drop drive. So if you have a drop drive of one, you would be really low and precise and almost get your ship exactly where you want mm -hmm. it. And so that, that is the difference of what's going on there. Uh, Lily, your... Four is max. Uh, no, uh, three is max. Three, three, is max. three and one. So we'll give you um, three links here. These just pop in and out. And Darren, your highest five. is five. That's already set for five. Ah. And so when you're doing your smaller number, just kind of cover yeah. it with your hand or, or something like that. Or bend. bend. All right. So, um, let's see, what do we talk about next? So planets, there are planets that we can fly to and from, and that is, the planets are where you're gonna, you're gonna pick up asteroids pieces, and you're gonna sell them at planets, and the markets for the planets are over here, and you're gonna see as we go, it's very simple, but that is kind of the primary mechanism of the game. It's a, what's called a pick up and deliver game. Uh, you're gonna pick up all these different materials, and hopefully sell them at the highest value at the different planets, uh, and you have to land on a planet in order to do that. Um, now, there's going to be different amounts that the different planets want. So right now, this in this prototype version at least, the yellow planet, which is here, um, is going to give the highest amount for yellow crystals. Um, and then the next highest amount will come for purple crystals and so on. But as you sell crystals, you're going to place one. Let's say you sold um, you know, those. Now the next player that goes to that same planet is only going to get four points for each of the crystals because that fifth spot is covered. The market is saturated. The market is saturated and it goes down as, as the game goes on. Uh, the game will actually, the game trigger uh, for game end is based on once all three planets, these top three here, have at least two crystals in a single row, which means two players or more have gone to that planet throughout the game. Mm -hmm. uh, that triggers the game end. Then we all take one more turn. Now, the two bottom planets here, I flipped over. We're in a three-player game, so there are going to be three colonized planets. One, two, three. Uh, and I randomly chose them. The other two get flipped over, and they're wild planets. Basically, they're not colonized. They're just overrun by nature and, and specimens and aliens and all these kinds of stuff. And they are still useful because there are still going to be passengers that we encounter that want to go to those planets. Mm -hmm. And those planets are going to give us a better chance of finding a certain type of card called specimens which is a, another thing that you might want to go for. So more on that as we go. That's generally how the planets work. 
I think we're ready to pick up some space and drop it. Mm. Uh, let's just see who goes first. Let's uh, we'll all roll, and whoever's highest is going to go first, and that's clockwise from there. Three. I got a one. 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 All right. So, Darren, you're going to go first. Uh, for now, what we're saying is, if you're not the first player, the next player gets a free explore card. So these are these these half size cards here. So Lily, you're going to get one explore card, and I'm going to get two. Now you're about to see a couple things. Hold on, <laughs> there's a couple different types of things in this explore deck. So there's a deck of these half size cards, and there are three different types of cards in there: passengers, ship upgrades, and specimens. Uh, so your first one is with <laughs> with some handwriting on it, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, is a passenger, Vinny Voody, and again, not our final artwork. <laughs> um, hey, that's pretty good artwork. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a um, this is a passenger. So you just keep it with your ship. Um, he's yellow, which means he wants to go to the yellow planet. So very easily visually connected. And when you land at that yellow planet, he says he's going to give you two extra credits for every asteroid of one type in your hold. So if you have three asteroids in your hold that are all one color, like purple, mm -hmm. let's say, it doesn't matter what color, but one color, he's going to give you two credits for each of those. So six credits in that case. So you want to get a lot of asteroids of the same color to make the most use out of him. If you go to the yellow planet, you use his ability and he goes away. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's a passenger. I got a specimen and an upgrade. Hey, fancy that. All right, so the upgrade, spectral, actually goes inside my ship i separate the two pieces of my ship and spectral is now inside the middle of that and i can get more upgrades as the game goes on and they keep expanding my ship they all connect nicely which is great uh and also this one the name of your ship has changed oh yeah. i am now the spacious spectral sunbeam mm -hmm. <laughs> the double S. and that gives me a permanent ability for the whole game passengers go away but they give you a bigger perk mine is permanent and it says plus one to green asteroid sales so I might want to start going towards the green asteroids. Gives me a slightly different thing than I'm going for initially. And then I also got a specimen. Now, I'll show you all here. Specimens are normally kept face down, and they count towards endgame scoring only. Mm -hmm. They are um, they're kind of a set collection element. So in this case, he's a camouflaging specimen. And what he says, he's, he's worth one credit. But he counts as all colors. There's five colors in the game for everything. So there's going to be other specimens that say uh, it counts as three for every pink specimen or three for every yellow specimen. Well, this guy counts as everything. So he's going to bolster all of those other ones. But I need to get more specimens to make that worth it. Scott, am I doing doing right so far? Everything good so far? Right, um, okay. One of the really cool things about the specimens uh, is and I don't know. I'm mentioning it now because I'm not sure how if people get a chance to really see this. Is that uh, a number of the specimens uh, score uh, others depending on how many eyes and limbs they have? So there's a very visual aspect to um, you know if you have one of these, you're looking for specimens that that have a bunch of eyes or not very many limbs. Uh, and we've had a lot of fun with that now that the artwork's starting to evolve. Yeah, so for the purposes of demonstration today, if we get any specimens, we will show people because it is fun to see those little elements that he's mm -hmm. talking about, even though we wouldn't normally know. That's a mm -hmm. hidden element. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I would also say, you know, that is, is a key element, you know, as we've been designing. Uh, I always, as a designer, I love to have a hidden score element because nobody's, nobody's ever able to tally each other's scores exactly. Mm -hmm. um, which I just enjoy in games. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yep. It all goes together. All right. So we're picking up all of our crystals and planets and hulks you have and the pirates. Whole universe in your hand. <laughs> the whole yeah. universe. All of infinite space. And I will probably pick up these that landed on our planet. Normally, you wouldn't put the planets inside the walls like yeah. I did here, but that's just uh, the pirate. That's fine. Okay. Yep. There we go. We have just mm. dropped a solar system. Now, um, in player order, so it starts with you and just goes clockwise, and we mm -hmm. go around and around and around. The first turn, all you can do is drop, use your drop drive, and drop mm -hmm. your ship anywhere in space. Now, you start, so you all know what we're kind of thinking to ourselves. You have nothing special on your right. ship, 
So you're going to be looking for like just what's best to get close together stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you already know that you might want to tor go towards a yellow planet, but mm -hmm. you also want all of one type of crystal. So you might be looking all for of one yellow. It, yeah, I mean, there might you look for where there's crystals of the same color close mm -hmm. together, two greens, two yellows. And I have my green extractor. So those are the kinds of things. So where we want to start in space might be based on those. Darren, go ahead and drop your ship. So you hold the ship over the board, drop it, and that's where you landed. Lily, drop your ship. Mm -hmm. I'll put it right there. And my drop drive is three... Um, I of course I was just talking a lot, so I wasn't really paying attention to what I actually want. But I think I want to go there. What do I have? I have three cargo spaces. I'm gonna go there. Why do I get the sense we're gonna be in a race? Oh, I knocked it. I didn't want to do that. All right, now it's back to Darren, and you take a normal turn. So normal turn is using one of your two drives, your mm -hmm. string drive or your drop drive. And if you use your string drive, anything you touch along your path, mm -hmm. you get to interact with and collect. Um, and the turns are super fast because that's all you do. Mm -hmm. It's only when you land on a planet or encounter maybe like a Hulk that you do something else. Well, what so, about the pirate again? How do you actually interact with the pirate? You just run over it and then you basically roll against the pirate. Okay. He rolls, okay, and I roll against that number. Yes, you're rolling against that number, and you have a plus three battle rating. So mm -hmm. you even that six is a uh, is like a pirate outpost. It's really mm -hmm. uh, it's the highest one, obviously. Uh, but you have a you know a decent chance, fifty fifty chance of. All right. Well, what just, if it's a tie? Uh, you, I think you win the tie. Tie mm -hmm. goes to the attacker. Yep, it says it right there. All right. So I'm gonna just uh, you know uh, let's make it interesting. I'll go, even though that's a tough one because I'm speedy and I have a pretty good battle. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to. This. And you can kind of bend the tool as you go, um, yeah. however you want, and then basically just pick up your ship so from... I'm going to go here. Yep. Getting those two. So I'm going to collect this. Okay. And I'm going to roll against that so I get... So collecting this, the asteroid goes yes. into one of his two cargo spaces. He only has two, but he's really fast, so that's the, the trade-off. Right. And now you roll against the six pirate. Mm-hmm. And if I beat it, what else? What is uh, so what you get for a pirate outpost is, first of all, you can immediately sell all your asteroids into one planet. Okay. Um, as though you were at the planet. Or you, if you don't want to do that, you can just explore using your explore rating and draw mm -hmm. some cards and all right. choose one. Let's go. Three. Six. Plus your three six. is six. So I beat it because Ty goes to me. Ty right. goes to you. So would you like to explore or yes. sell your one yellow I'm asteroid? I'm selling my yellow. All right. So he's selling his yellow asteroid to the yellow planet. He race. puts it in the highest spot available, which is five. So he gets five space bucks for that sale. And now that space is covered on that planet. So the next player that sells yellow to the yellow planet will only get four. Um, Does that go away? You redrop that. Ah. And we always drop in this game at, oh. as though it's a height of five, which is your like your length. You don't have to measure it exactly, but that's the idea is you always drop at a, approximately a height of five wherever you want it. Wow. Okay, we'll just push them off. There we go. That was fun. That was. All right, Lily. I may mean, do my drop drive again. Because I can't explore unless I land on what? Exploring you would do when you land on any planet, wild or colonized, or when you land on a space hulk, the black cubes. I am going to drop again. I'm going to try right there. Okay. It might not work out in your favor. Ooh, All right, okay. that's fine with me. Okay, so there I go. I have a string drive of four. I did not quite land where I wanted, but that's okay. What do I have? Three cargo. I am going to... It's going to take me a couple turns to do what I want, but I'm just going to take that path there. Move my ship there. I get those two asteroids in my hold. Darren. Okay, so um, and unlike um, Dungeon Drop, it's not a number of turns before nope. the game is over. The, the, it, it's it's different... based on the planet. So right now, if somebody else sells a yellow to the mm -hmm. yellow planet, yellow planet is satisfied. Now there's only two other planets, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have at least two asteroids in any one row on all three colonized planets. That's mm -hmm. the trigger for the end game. But you can still go to that planet even if it's Oh, yeah, two. yeah. All right, so... You know, one good thing about that end game trigger we found is it, it scales nicely with the number of players uh, because you can see we play with a different number of colonized planets for the number of players. All right, let's see... All right, it looks like, and I can pick up and deliver in one turn, correct? Yes, yep. absolutely. Well, would you look at that? Well, that's the green 
crystal I'm trying to get. Exactly. Yeah. So, Not anymore. I'm going to. All right. So Kick this up. what Darren just did, he navigated around me, jerk. He um, uh, he picked up a green crystal and he landed at the green planet. So when you land at a planet, you do three things. Number one, drop off green passengers. Okay. You had oh, I don't. Yeah. You had, don't have any green passengers. Number two, sell all the cargo in your hold. Uh, you it. may sell, right, Scott? You, we're not forcing it? Okay. So you do want to sell. You get five points for that. Yeah, so you good. got another five. What the heck? I know. <laughs> and step three is you explore. You always explore at a planet. Mm-hmm. So what's your explore rating? Uh, three. Three. So you draw three cards from the explore deck, and you choose one of them to keep. Mm-hmm. Except you get a bonus. We're at a colonized planet, so if you get a passenger in here, you can keep a passenger for free. Colonized planets are mm-hmm. where you get most passengers. Okay. So you can keep a passenger and then one of the other cards. Okay. If there are no passengers, you don't get the bonus. All right. And if there are more than one passenger... Then you can take two. Oh, you can for free? No, or you get, you the, get the one, one for free. free. Yep. Okay. Uh, I like how he's already winning. Yeah. I, I like that jerk. as well. It's All right. So I'm going to take him for free. And it's true. I, I think I know what I'll, I'll I'll adjust my turn quite substantially, which stinks, but that's all right. That's part of what happens in space, guys. You with your long string drives. <laughs> all right. So while okay. you're deciding your other one, I'm going to tell people. Uh, so he's taking this passenger, the gambler, uh, which says at the um, when he drops off this passenger is blue. He wants to go to the blue planet. Uh, he can take any two specimens from the discard pile. There's none in the discard pile yet, but you're going to see the discard pile is going to start filling up. I'm giving that to the discard. I'm taking a specimen. Uh, for the sake of this, do you want me to... Yeah, go ahead and explain it. Okay, um, I have... It is a nocturnal, which means I get plus two credits for each specimen with two or less eyes. Mm-hmm. Now, this one already has one, so, I, yep. so this one itself is worth two. And, yep. then, okay. and any other specimens that have two or fewer eyes. And the one, the other one I took was... Um, I already explained that one. Okay. The passenger. I have to read it myself now. Yeah. <laughs> and Darren, you'd be keeping that uh, specimen face down. Yep. Right. We're just doing it for the sake of the... Okay. Okie dokie. Let's see. Can I make it? Do we count? Yeah, I think that's in. Right? Yeah. Yep. That's All I have to do is touch it. Yeah. Blink. Oh, you don't. You can continue though. The whole. Oh, you only no, have a string drive. One. <laughs> one. I only have one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jason. I, I will say the the biggest difference I've been, you know, between um, our two prototypes right now is that the first link on my string drive is longer. Um, uh, that you know, so it would be like giving her like a little like, half an inch extra or something to have more than one. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, so I don't even know if I've told you this, but I'm working with the Cyber Knights to actually create start and end pieces. And the start and end pieces would yeah. have a little half moon, That's cool. uh, like a cup, and you put yeah. it up against your oh. ship, and then you have a cup on the other side that you put the ship into. And what that would that mean is, is that those start and end pieces would inherently add to the overall length. So someone with a string drive of one would actually still get that extra half inch or so. Yeah, yeah, she should have like a little extra. (laughs) But she got it, it's fine. We don't need to give her anything extra here. All right, so (laughs) it's my turn. I want, I know what I want. Hopefully I can do it. I wanna get that yellow crystal and land, and I can do exactly that. So I boom, get the yellow crystal. It was supposed to be green, and I land. I'm also on the green planet there with Darren, but that doesn't matter. Um, Okay, so I landed. Step one, passengers. I have none for this planet. Step two, I sell. Now I have three different color crystals. They all go to the green planet. Green is gonna get me four. Um, The yellow is gonna get me three. And this purple would actually only get me one because the planet just doesn't like purple. Uh, Or I could hold on to it. Where's the purple planet? Over there? Um, Hold it. I'll sell it, it's fine. Okay, so when, when they only need uh, when they only give one they don't even take the crystal it's just a, a permanent you know one i just redrop this crystal and also if you you haven't seen it yet but if you ever sell more than one of the same color crystal mm-hmm. you only put one on the planet and then the rest get redropped back in oh okay okay all right so what did i get i got four five so six seven the green eight uh and then this one gets dropped back in uh whoa okay so i get eight 
five, six, seven, eight. And then I explore. I have an explore rating of three as well. One, two, three. Must be nice to have three. Money. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is interesting. So, exploring on colonized planets, uh, I can keep an extra passenger. And I just got three passengers. Two of them are the same color, which means that could be an interesting thing for me to go for. Oh, and I apologize. I get one more credit because of my uh, my spectral. Uh, I sold a green asteroid, so I get one more credit for that. Cheating? Well, that's what I wanted the other green one that Darren took from me. Um, flip two holes, give me two credit, draw an explore card, plus two to asteroid. Yeah, I'm going to take these two passengers. So I have two green passengers. They both want to go to the same planet. And I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, so it's my back to my turn again? Yes. All right. Um, let's see. Now, this green planet here, there's two green asteroid sails that have already sold there. So this planet is satisfied mm -hmm. um, to, as far as end game trigger. All right, so uh, somebody asked, when dropping down, would it be a strategy to try and knock one of the crystals out of the way of an opponent? Or would there be a penalty to place uh, for that and place the crystal back and redrop? There's no, no, you're spot on. Um, if, if something gets knocked around, it's knocked around. That's it. Like, there's no penalty. There's no trying to remember where was it and put it back or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that could be a play. Uh, it's not necessarily one I've personally done, but certainly could be. Okay. So I just collected a couple of crystals, and I am now there. Okie dokie. feel like this guy. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to drop again, because I'm not yep. going just for one. Right there, because it'll bounce. Alright, I'll take it. And uh, so from a planet, to get off the planet, you can, you drop, certainly you can drop anywhere you want using the drop drive. You can also string drive off. Like if there that's was right, stuff around right. me, I don't know, I didn't notice. I just make sure I did it. Right oh yeah, there you go. So you string drive off, that's yeah. fine too. <laughs> we you... used we used to have you <laughs> flick your ship off. We didn't, yeah, we, we removed that. Yeah, this felt good. <laughs> can you drop onto Especially a planet? Especially five. No, so that is one restriction. When you drop, even if you hit a crystal, you don't mm. get the crystal. If you hit a planet, you don't orbit the planet. Mm. There is an upgrade in the deck that says after you drop, you can then string drive like one space. Mm. So you might be able to collect something after dropping, but normally you, you don't get anything from dropping. Yeah, just uh, as a visual of what we're talking about, because Lily right now is playing at a kind of disadvantage, I'm going to say, <laughs> say that now. Um, so, you know, with what Jason's talking about, like, this, this, his tool oh, is yeah. way superior to my actual string, which was much more awkward. This is my original mm -hmm. prototype fuel. Also, um, one reason why the, the drive that uh, Jason's using is, uh, it's a little tricky to see. Eventually, I think the final one will be, will be colored, like my string, to show these different lengths more visually. Uh, so you know, you know, you go up to the the red level, like almost like a fuel gauge. Um, but uh, you can see the first the on this side, the first length of my string is significantly longer than the others. This balances um, people with different string drive lengths more. So Lily's first link would be a lot. I think longer. that She's is equivalent to, to the whole thing. Like that would be <laughs> your length. <laughs> You're playing with so the really, tiny, So really you want, bro. What? You really won the game, actually. Whoa, we whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I would have won by now, yeah. yeah. All right. So my turn? Yep. Well, I'm just going to do this. Oh, land at the pink planet. Drop off pink passengers. None? No, no pink passengers. I don't have any passengers, um, but I have a gem. So oh. there's only and one planet this. that needs to be triggered. Nope, nope. There's, uh, you need two crystals in the same row. Oh, and eight. Class. Five and four, so I have nine. Yes. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, and then I have an explore. And then you explore three, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Okay. So what folks may be seeing and realizing is this has kind of 4X elements going on. 4X uh, games being... Uh, expand, exploit, uh, explore, exterminate. I probably didn't do that in the right order, but that's a 4X game. Um, there's not really a lot of extermination in this game, but but it does have some of those elements. And in a way, just like Dungeon Drop introduced like a dungeon crawler to a wide audience, a very accessible game, 
we see that this is doing something similar. This is introducing pick up and deliver or almost that 4X mentality, but to a very wide, this is meant to be just as accessible as Dungeon Drop. It's a little deeper, has a little more interesting things like more personal choice in this game, but um, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, you're done, you chose some stuff. Yep, I, right. uh, I did the two thing again, right? So I got my one specimen for free first, right? You got a passenger for passenger, free. Sorry, okay, the passenger. Yes, right, right, and then I grabbed the specimen. Yep, and that's fine, okay. That's not. Oh, you actually, if you just touch it, then you get it. Yeah, nice. So you get it. All right. Okay. I got a yellow. All right. I know what I'm doing. So you're going to see a Hulk in a second. Um, I think, uh, what's the right way? Yeah, I'm going to go there first. Then I'm going to pivot. Pivot! Come on. You're all with me on that reference, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to get the green crystal. We're going to get a Hulk. We're going to get this two pirate, and I'm going to land right on that side. All we're right. We're seeing your head right now, Jason. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got a green crystal. That goes in my hope. I got a black uh, Hulk, and then I got a two pirate. So let's do the Hulk first. A Hulk is similar to a planet in that I get to explore there, but you know how you're colonized planets. You've been getting a free passenger. On a Hulk, I get a free upgrade if I find an upgrade card in here. Uh, I did not. I only got three specimens, so I just get one of these three. Uh, what is my other specimen again? Ah, it counts as all colors. So this one here, plus two credits for each yellow specimen. He would give it. He would get that bonus for the camouflaging that I have in the other one. Um, yep, I'm going to take that one. So I have a little bit of a, a set there going on. That was from the Hulk, and then I'll redrop that. But I'm also going to battle this two pirate. I have a battle of plus zero, so I need a two or better. A four will do it. A two pirate is a bandit, which says collect the nearest asteroid. Nearest asteroid to me is that purple one, so I just get to collect the purple. And now I redrop both the pirate and the Hulk. Um, I don't know where I'm going next, so we're just gonna do that. Okay, back to Darren. All right, I'm going to Use my drop drive. And I'm going to drop here. Four. Oh, oh he rolled! All the way and that's there. totally legit. Yeah. Right the now, I'm over there, and Darren. It's fine. Yeah. yeah okay. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's unfortunate. All right, Lil. Yeah, you stay away from my yellow stuff. And that's <laughs> the trouble with having a, a drop drive that has a significant height. Right? Yeah. Where it's like the pilot is not... Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, you're close to purple. <laughs> Probably yeah, get that. Hurt too. Uh, I will say, like, I, I'm on a house rule. Lily, you should be using at least two links for your string drive here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one for your string. For the rest of this game, yeah. Thank there you. you. <laughs> 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 All right, back to me. I am going to, it doesn't matter, I know I can get there. I'm going to land on that green planet, and I'm going to first hand in two green passengers. Uh, the first says, gain two credits and flick two hulks. So I can flick two hulks, maybe close to where I want to go, I don't know. Uh, and then this one lets me draw an explore card. I just get to draw and keep a explore card. I'll look at that in a second. I'm going to flick two hulks. Uh, yep, I know what I'm going to be doing, I think. So we're going to do that and that. It's fine. Uh, this that I got for free is an upgrade. Nurturing. Score one specimen twice. Ah, I already have two that, that, that um, kind of play off each other, so that's great. That's going to help me out later on. So what's, I am now the like spacious a, spectral nurturing sunbeam. Uh, of course you are. <laughs> and now I get to explore. I still haven't done that, so I draw three. I get to keep an extra passenger. I did not get any passengers. So, oh wow, I just drew another of the same one. This is called Bountiful, but it's the same concept. Score a specimen twice. I might go all in on this and really focus on those specimens. Um, uh, camouflaging, Scott, does it count as any color I want or all any colors? Color. Uh, any single color. Any single color. We have to clarify that because I have another one here that gives credits for white. He doesn't count as each, right? It's only one color. We'll have to. We'll have to talk about that. I'll take the incubator for now. 
So what's the name of your ship again? My name of my ship is the Spacious, Spectral, Nurturing, Bountiful Sunbeam. Nice. Yeah. So sweet. All right. Okay. Karen? Let's see. I think I might be able to do this. Whoa. Yeah, I think do a loop around. Oh, yeah. loop loop So I'm going to pick up this. Um, now, I can't sell it at the blue because it does, it's not a... Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Can. Every wild planet gives you one credit for every asteroid. So you can. You don't have to, but you can. It'll just be worth less. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just do that anyway, just to, you know, I'm going to deal with the this thing here too. The um. All right. So the Hulk is first. So you draw three, because that's your explorer rating. Is we all have explorer three? Oh, you have four. Uh, so there's your three, mm-hmm. and then if one is an upgrade, you get to keep that for free. Okay. That for free, I get the exclusive, which is a luxury cabin. So I get plus two credit. Uh, delivering passengers. Oh, which I think you're about to do. Which I am, and I'm <laughs> going to take this one, which is another passenger who is blue. Oh, jeez. So, <laughs> all right. You lucky. So first, I'm going to get. I'm going to sell this and get my one credit. Okay. All right, that's the uh, one there. Okay, and then I have. That's blue. Sorry. Now oh, I'm yes. dropping off this passenger. Take two any upgrades from the discard pile. Are there any upgrades in the discard pile? Uh, I can look for it. Yep. Yes, one. One. Just one. Okay, so I'll take that upgrade. This guy's really helping. Oh, I get a figure out. Plus one explore. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, um, and what do I get again for dropping him off? If, if You get whatever he gives you. Uh, okay, so it's not an actual, but I had something. Oh, you have that. Two, you two get two credits, credits for that. Okay, yep. so I get two more for that. Yep. All right. And I'm going to drop this guy off. Take... Uh, any t- so I'm going to get two more credits for this. Yes, and I get take any two <laughs> specimens from the discard pile. Yep. All right, and then you can redrop these two yep. cubes. Yeah, and I'll just say like um, you know both Jason's last turn and Darren's now. Um, you know I find that a lot of the fun of this game is arranging a big drop off oh. where you yeah. Know, We've got uh, multiple passengers that match that color. Um, you know, a bonus to the asteroid type you're selling. Obviously, you're trying to play this game to angle for these. Mm-hmm. There are only going to be so many of these planet visitations, so arranging a big one where you score in a bunch of ways is, is uh, obviously what you're trying to puzzle mm-hmm. for. I'm, I'm building up for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already gave you the asterisk. <laughs> I'm very thankful for the two. All right, <laughs> Lily, I think you can go ahead and take your turn. Guys, because right now that I have the two, I can actually get ah, it. Ah, there you go. And you are building up. You have a big hold, so you can. So this is this one. Go ahead. I'm so angry. Mm-hmm. I will go. Let's see. I know approximately what I wanted to do. Yes. Yes, yes, okay, yes. So I guess these going back. Okay. Uh, I am going to drop my drop drive of three. Yep, 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 yep. I'm going to go, mm, yep, yeah, I'm going to go here. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, that whole rolling thing is because for us, we do have these round ships. You know, that's something maybe we have to still like is that cool or not you know maybe they shouldn't be well you know not not fully determined it's already happened three times so apparently it's a thing yeah it's actually never happened to me that much before (laughs) or maybe it has something to do with this material yeah this map could happen but that means it could happen so do you want to bump it over so it doesn't keep rolling around or just let your ship fly away all right so um i guess i'll come around here Pick up a green asteroid. Green. Oh, I think your son is watching us, Darren. Hey, right. Which one? Oh. Problem. I'm guessing Ryland. Well, yeah, the handle is Hurricane. Uh, Not, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that would be Ryland. Hey, Ryland. Oh. Ooh, that works. You're close, right in there. Yeah. All right. So, what can I do from here? This is not where I want to be. You know what? I am gonna redrop. Yeah, that's not at all what I wanted to. <laughs> that's better. Okay, go. 
Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's not keep zipping around. Right around here. He's just doing circles. Mm-hmm. Sorry. All right, let's see if this works. I think it will. We'll bend it a little bit more. There you go. Cool. And I, I would give it to you, yep. definitely. Especially after all the turmoil you've gone through. Yeah. <laughs> all right, for me. Yeah, I'll get the Hulk, and then I'll land at this purple planet. So the Hulk gives me an explore. One, two, three. Keep an upgrade. All right. Yeah, that that, that one gives me, shit. yeah, I'm now the Unquenchable. It gives me plus one to my string drive, which the, is nice. The Unquenchable what? Hold on. And then, <laughs> and then uh, that's my free one. Uh, and then I get one more passenger. We're going to get the purple one because I'm landing at purple. I don't even know what it is, but I'm assuming it'll be good. So then I redrop that. That's fine. Interesting. Then I land. I deliver purple passengers. Uh, battle the nearest pirate. Okay. The nearest pirate to me is that one. It's a two. That is a bandit again. And oh. I only got one, so I did not battle it. I redrop him. Interesting. He's still a two and right next to me, even closer. Mm -hmm. Then I... So that was that passenger. I didn't really do anything there. Then I sell green and purple to the purple planet. That's four, five, six, seven. Uh, yep, so that's just seven. Five, six, seven. And the purple planet now has two in one row, mm -hmm. so that's satisfied. So if somebody sells one more yellow to the yellow planet, that will trigger the game end. Hmm. And that might be a strategic move at this point if you right. thought you had you could yep. shot her. Like Lily would probably not do, although oh, um, she might yeah. actually because yeah. that's her oh. big payday. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, I'm just going to go flying. Fly away, fly away. Mm. I am almost at the green cap. I'm gonna uh, drop drive. So you might be ending it next turn. Ooh, right where you wanted it. Not oh, surprisingly, for three. I know. You're done. Uh, so I now have a string drive of five because of my plus one there. Do, 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 do. Um. Oh, I know what I want. I know what I want. So white and blue are wilds. There's the white and the blue planet. I want specimens because I get all these bonuses. I am going to drop. My drop drive is three. So when she triggers the end, we here. all get one more one turn. One more turn. Including her? Mm, or yeah. We finish out the round, and yes. then we get one more round. Okay. So it started that's with true. you, so that's how we... Oh, you finished the round. Not the person who finished it. We then. finished the round. You started the round, so gotcha. we finish with me, and then one more. Well, there we go. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead. All right. Well, I'm just going to land with Chuka. And let's see what we got now. Plus two green ast per asteroid sale. So we have uh, two green. So, yeah. oh, uh, yeah, the, um, there's two there, but I guess that's a, I just redropped them, right? What? No, no. You get three oh. for each of these. So plus two yeah. for each. So five for each of well, these. Well, I meant like, yeah. And then this you, you're going to redrop. Right. Okay. So how, how many did you say again? Five? For each. One, two, yep. three, four, five, six, right? You they dropped off two. So then there's plus two for each asteroid. So hold on. Each one oh, right, right, is right. three plus your two. So each three. one's five. So ten total. Ten. Okay. okay. Um, but you also turned in a green passenger, and you get two for that. Right. The th I guess the thing I was wondering. So, oh, so like when you do it in one shot, they it's not like it goes boom, boom. Right. It goes the, whatever that one. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. yep. Well, oh, you're in for big payday then, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, she is. <laughs> All right, and I th and I'm hand him. handing him in. Yep. I get a um, plus two for the... I already, you already got that. I told oh, you, you already gave that. me that too? Yep. Okay. And... Um, That's it. Now you explore. And, we, and I get one more explore now. Ah, uh, so plus four. One. And again, if there's a passenger, you get that for free. Yeah. That's the rule that I have to remember somehow. Alright, uh, this is gonna be a, a good drop off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, you're in proximity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully I don't have it's any... enough to keep up. 
Okay. I'll do my math again and uh, narrate it, but uh, yeah. I think I'm getting uh, 27. <laughs> Um, what? Uh, really? so, wow. Let's let's And here you are planet. worrying about her. Let's land on that planet right there. Um so I'm gonna sell four oh, of my uh, passenger first. Earn two credits for each asteroid of one type in your hold, so that's eight. So that's two, four, six, eight. Yep, that mm-hmm. and that's for the passengers. So you get eight for that. Don't take for mine. I'm giving oh. <laughs> switch it out. Alright, so eight for that. Yep. Then these are four each. Four F-E-L-G. each, and you so redraw, redraw three of them, and one goes there. And that does trigger the end of the game, so it's going to be, we'll mm-hmm. finish this round, and then one more round. So that's 16. Cleaning out my stuff here. Right there. And then a blue, which is three. Three. Wow. Yeah, that was it. Now the scores are going to be much more interesting. And that's, you know, that's your ship, right? It's slow and clunky, but... Five hold, and you happen mm-hmm. to have a passenger that matched. So yeah, I didn't really, see you well done. up with all those yellows. <laughs> I uh, I think the the two strings that uh, Scott recommended uh, severely helped me out. So all right, so I'm only gonna get two more turns this turn and one more. Mm-hmm. I I still think I want to do only what... what you do, Lily. You're doing just fine. That's better. That'll give me a good last turn. Okay, Darren, your last turn. Mm. Alright, I'm on green. Uh, doesn't look like there's a lot for me to do, really. Um, How are we doing on time? Oh, we're perfect. Because yeah. uh, I'm not going to get another turn. Nope. And no. I'm really not next to anything that I can interact with, like a pirate or a... No, yeah, that's what you'd be looking for. Right. So really, I basically I'm just you oh, might not you have drop your ship in the middle of stuff that other people might get. Yep. <laughs> Take that other, uh, you, you know, uh, but you get, suggestion. But you don't get to collect. Nope. Anything, no, you no. can no, maybe just bounce it, it around away from just for fun. Oh, uh, okay. Whoever you think's winning. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll I'm yeah. going to fly over here to celebrate with Lily. With Some you. specimens care about where you end, so you might have a specimen. Oh wait, did that... you get to that? Yeah. Is that a plant you got to? Yeah, I think so. Well, oh, then you get an explore. explore. Again, then. Oh, that, okay. That's a good thing. Well, it's tight. I don't know. Well, there's the extra cup, remember, so. Okay. Yeah, so you get four and keep a passenger. Well, the passenger won't matter, most likely, but. It doesn't make drop them off now, but I, right? Or now, can, can you drop off as you no. receive them? No. Oh, I never got so to explore draw, when I dropped off. If you off draw myself. a passenger that matches the color of the planet you're currently on. Yeah. Essentially, thematically, they want to go on like uh, a voyage away. A and day come trip. Back yeah. to the same location. <laughs> you sure. can't deliver them on the same time. You get to keep a passenger. I forgot to other... search when I sold my stuff. Yep, she's doing that now. Oh, it says here about sure. delivered passengers, but I haven't been tracking my passengers. Well. It says something like, earn three credits, delivered passengers, including... Yeah, that's on the turn you're delivering them. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Now I'm the lone inflatable wombat. Inflatable wombat. Nice. <laughs> right, I guess I'll just see that specimen. Okay. Guys, this round's going to be so nice for me. Last turn, Lil. Oh, I, can, I actually can go to a pirate. Yes, you can. Oh, why not? Yes. And that's a four. That's a Corsair. It would gain you three credits immediately. Yeah, if, if why you beat not? Them up. Let's try. So that's four. I have plus two. Six. All right, take three credits. Nice. And redrop that one in case it matters for me. Where are you? I'm there. <laughs> Not oh, no. All right, and my last turn, and the very last turn of the entire game, I will get a Hulk. Oh, can I get the Hulk and the pirate and still land? No. Nope, that's too much. Actually, it's not. No, just too much. So I can get the Hulk and the purple and land, but not the pirate. Okay, so first is the Hulk. Uh, Redrop it. The Hulk lets me explore, keep a free passenger. Uh, I'm sorry, free uh, free upgrade rather. So, but the upgrades aren't going to matter at this point. So that gave me. Calculating, and then I get to keep a, uh, yeah, we'll just keep this specimen, whatever it is. I'm not even going to look at it yet. Yep, that's fine. All right, and then I land at Blue Planet. I have no blue passengers. Uh, I sell purple for three. Oh, sorry, this is the Blue Planet. I sell my purple there for one, 
but it's a wild planet, which means when I draw my three explore, I get to keep it a free specimen. And You're again, that's kind of what I go for. Specimen. And then the biggest ship I've ever seen. I'll just take this passenger because I'll get something because of one of my specimens, I think. Okay, and that is it. That's the end of the game. Now we do all the now we adding. score. So. Mm -hmm. Darren, let's start with you since you started the game. All right, illegal score the number of credits shown on the nearest pirate die. Five. Yes. Okay. So take I'm... five. Cool. Because that's that Just one. put them to the side in case you need them. Yep. Uh, plus six credits. You must discard one other specimen before scoring. I'm going to hold that one over to see if I want. Don't want one. Uh, plus two credits for each specimen with two eyes or less. Assuming that one too. So this would only be worth. Two points. Mm -hmm. uh, plus two credits for each specimen with more than two eyes. That one, that one, and that one. And that one. Okay. Yeah. This one has one eye. That's three. That's oh, three. that's three. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. So I'm going to use this guy for sure. So I'm going to probably have to d discard two eyes. And what's this one? Prismatic. Credits for each specimen of a different color. All right, I'm going to keep this one. So this is the one I'm going to spend ditch it. For six, yeah. to, to get the six. So I get six credits. So let me go in order here. So this gives me six. Okay. Boom. Illegal score. You already did that one. Okay, that one's yeah. done. Uh, two credits for each specimen with two or more eyes. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. So eight. I think Darren really won this. Oh, yeah. So, I'm interested to see your specimen collection. Yeah. I don't even know what's in there. <laughs> I've barely been looking. Well, well you never know then. All right, uh, okay, credits for each specimen of a different color. So I have four different colors. Oh, jeez. So that's one, <laughs> two, three, four, ten. <laughs> yeah, I think he... Well, I want to know the score, too. Uh -huh. Okay, so that was fun. Okay. <laughs> Lil? Think, so here I have 10, 15, 20, 25. I think I miscalculated. I think I'm supposed to have 30, but I'll say 25. Why? Because before, when I dropped no, off, it was four yellows plus one blue plus the two for every four. So I think I was supposed to pick up 27 points for that plus the additional three last year. Just take it. It won't matter. Take, take, yeah, take, take it, it won't it's matter, good. but... That's fine. Okay, and that's your score. What's your total score, actually? We didn't hear 30, it. 40, 50, 60. That is definitely Ooh. the highest score I've ever seen in a game of Drop Drive. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to push all this over for now. So for me, it's whatever's there, plus, all right, my specimens. I only have four. <laughs> um, but you're, you're going to double at least one of them, right? I'm going to double two, two of them. You get a huge yeah. ship now. Mm. You all right, so ship. plus two credits for each undelivered passenger. So that's two. I'm just going to put that there. Plus two credits for each yellow specimen. He can count as yellow, so that's going to be two, four. So I'm going to put four next to him. Uh, this one just gives one credit. So he's one. And this one, roll a battle die, earn credits equal to the number rolled. One. <laughs> one. So then I get to double two of these. I'll double this one. So he becomes another four. And I'll double this one. So he becomes two. Another two. And that is it. Yeah, Darren definitely won this, but just to see the total. Well, you didn't win because tackiness, right? Right, the tackiness. The okay. tackiness, yeah. Um, if I had rolled a six on that and then been able to double that, it would have been a little more interesting. But 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, Three, which is a more typical score that I have seen. No. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna have to rewatch this from the beginning and See do where a I messed real, up? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to do a real analysis of exactly. how you got to sixty points in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it could be user error. That's for sure. <laughs> I think I could have won if I had gone the but two you're... from the beginning. You know, I made I made a comeback. <laughs> you did, but you, you did. been really sharp. Did you see any mistakes did, that you can remember me making? Like the <laughs> errors in? No, no, you're good. Oh, I don't know. It's I'm very easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a full game of Drop Drive with explanation with three players. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's uh... Scott. What do you think watching it live for the first time watching other people? Watching other people play, yeah, no, it's good. Well, I've watched, I've watched other other people play, but I'm usually at the table as yeah. well, so it is interesting seeing you guys go. 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, everything, we're obviously, as you're saying, we're still in the process of balancing everything. Um, yeah, specimens, it's interesting, have gone from, there was, uh, you know, a number of versions ago, they were uh, not scoring people very many points, and people weren't really, uh, they were discarding them a lot. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we've taken them, I can see, back in the other direction. They're now a major force in the scoring. Um, so that's kind of cool. I mean, uh, Darren also did really well with um, passenger delivery. He got that bonus mm -hmm. um, for yep. every delivered passenger, and that combined really well with My speed. his ability to speedily go to a lot of planets, make a lot of uh, passenger deliveries. Um, so he was doubling up on stuff a lot. Um, yeah, no, it's all interesting. And of course, this is the fun of it now is um, to process this information and and see where we go from here. But hopefully, I think people can see enough of the game to really get a, a feel yeah. for what the, the play experience is like. And of course, we've hinted at uh, some of the possible like stretch goals. There are so many little, just imagine a little module that ties in, uh, I don't know, a time traveler, or that ties in some kind of a vortex, or a black hole, or, you know, there's all sorts we could pull in traditional sci-fi mm -hmm. tropes into this and, you know, have little add-ons that just add a, a, a piece or two, but when you interact with it, it does something new and different and cool. Mm -hmm. If you lose a battle with the pirate, do they ever, like, do any harm to you? Like, do they ever, like, take away So they don't you? as a default. Uh, I forget if it is one of the mod uh, upgrades or if it was in an ex uh, one of those stretch goals I was just talking about. But I did have a thought for something where you might get a an extra bonus to attack, but if you fail, then you actually lose, like, a crystal or something. Because that'd be cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. Yeah, because right now you don't really feel threatened by the pirates at all. It's yeah, just a matter of... Yeah, yeah, you win, yeah, you lose, you lose, whatever. Now, we've talked about this. I mean, in general, you know, as a kind of design aesthetic, I, I tend to enjoy um, bonuses more than penalties, right? And so, like, the penalty essentially is not getting the bonus as, as mm -hmm. current. You know, that's that's what went wrong is mm -hmm. you, you don't get the bonus you would mm -hmm. have gotten. Um, we have talked about, like, for people that like a little bit more cutthroat game you know a good i could see a good uh sort of mini expansion to this uh allowing some inter-ship combat that might have that type of uh penalty hmm. uh but something i like something that could be separated out yeah no i think that's great yeah. because when you get your plans mucked up like if if the if the penalty for losing to a pirate say is, is discarding a specimen or damaging your ship or something you can get some of these big combos that you guys were going for can get all mm -hmm. um all taken away from you basically which never feels good yeah i guess if it's like an add-on the way you can either choose to do it or not yeah i think that that feels mm -hmm. good because then everybody at least is right. bought into the kind of game you're playing yeah yeah awesome all right well <clears throat> Let's uh, let's close it out. So this has been Drop Drive, the unveiling for the first time. So uh, yeah. hopefully folks like what they saw. This is still in development, but we anticipate that this will launch mm -hmm. on Kickstarter next year. Hopefully earlier part of next year. We'll see. We have this and another large game in the works. So uh, we'll see which one kind of hits first. Very large game. Uh, very large. <laughs> Much larger than these other two. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, so... Uh, sign up for our newsletter if you just want to keep up to date on Drop Drive and all the other great things that we're doing. Go to phaseshiftgames.com and on our homepage is sign up for a newsletter. That's the best way to stay in touch. Connect with us on Facebook, of course. Um, and then what's if you have coming any up? Comments too, if they have any comments. Oh about God, yeah, absolutely. Like if you like what you saw, if you have even ideas you want to throw at us, like hey, you know, we, we, we absolutely we can... send them in. Yeah, we'd love that. Uh, all right, so then in one hour. And 20 minutes, we will be back on to talk about Kickstarter. That's the 1.30 Eastern. Yeah, so we will be uh, talking about our Kickstarter from Dungeon Drop and taking a real honest look at what we did, choices we made, what things worked really well for us, what things we would maybe change the next time around. So especially for folks who are interested in Kickstarter, maybe thinking about running your own or anything like that, or just interested in the inner workings of how we math things like our shipping zones and um, and <laughs> stretch goals. and <laughs> uh, By all means, look forward to you joining us for that. Uh, and then an hour and a half after that, at 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m., 
BST, uh, we will be on the main stage of uh, UK Games Expo with the UK team, mm -hmm. uh, and they'll be interviewing us and talking about all, probably a lot of the same stuff, but I don't know what they'll ask us. It might be interesting to, to see what comes up there. Is it so. safe to say that with Kickstarter there's a lot of opportunities to do it wrong? There are a ton of opportunities to do lots of things wrong. <laughs> right, yes. right. It's, that's the biggest challenge, yeah. and hopefully we can help people by maybe... yes discouraging the behavior that might hurt them in the long But time. also knowing that this is just us and our one Kickstarter. Now, we our happen to have a good success, which is great, uh, but by no means are we experts, nor <laughs> do we tout ourselves as experts. No, just that not at all. We do have some experience to share. Right, exactly. So. All right, I'm going to paste into the chat on Twitch and Facebook. If you want that badge for UK Games Expo, you can click the link and get the badge. And other than that... Discount code. Um, oh, yeah, well, for all of our um, Dungeon Drop add-ons, this isn't Dungeon Drop here, but if you're interested in any of our Dungeon Drop products, go to faceshiftgames.com. Uh, we do have an online store, and we're giving 20% off uh, this weekend, so if you want anything on there, the walls, the mats that we have, our mini expansions, uh, all there, and just use the coupon code virtually expo, all one word, and you get 20% off anything you purchase. Uh, and I'm pasting in the badge code right now i want to thank everyone for joining us and we do hope to see you again at any of the remaining sessions that we have yeah. otherwise enjoy the rest of the con thank you so much take care yeah. Bye. Yeah.